Yes, yes, yes. My apologies. My apologies. It happens sometimes. So this is a continuation from what you just saw. Make sure you watch these back to back. Uh, and don't forget to check out Doggy Diamonds No Filter on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Like I told y'all before, it is very, very important to listen to the audio versions of these shows as well as the video versions. Unlike other people, I do put my show as audio. So make sure you go listen. So, yeah, uh, we back. Um, like we were saying, when we first met, um, I was insane. Yeah, you, uh, hothead. <laughs> Everything, you know, with everybody and everything was, fuck him, fuck him. I don't like him. And I was like, calm down, man. Like, <laughs> like, relax a little bit, man. It ain't never that serious because, see, the thing is, man, we can never look at none of this stuff from an emotional place because it's all business. Mm -hmm. but it's did, all business. But did you notice, though, bro, my, um, some of my persona that I had has been taken and <laughs> oh, 100 so now you see my little clones running around getting busy off of what i used to do but only reason why i don't do it anymore because of your guidance and me and, and you understanding you explaining the business to me like certain things is not good for business you know so i can't just go shoot him i can't beat him up i can't publicly you know, blast people for the business. Now I'm, I'm able to speak my speech, but I can't go in on certain things because of business purposes, because it's not even worth it. You know what I'm saying? Some people is not even worth discussing, you know, um, um, you know, of uh, small minded people discuss people, but big minded people discuss business, you know? So again, that's, that's why I stopped and didn't go at a few people, but go ahead though. Exactly. Because it's never personal, man. You know, the thing is, um, we are already dealing with people, especially when you're dealing with show hosts that are coming from an emotional place. Mm -hmm. This is their baby in some cases, and they have a dream that they're trying to accomplish. They have a goal they're trying to get accomplished. I'm going to always tell you the best way to get that goal accomplished, but when people hear the steps that it takes in order to accomplish that goal, they start thinking in their mind, like, wow, man, that's too much work. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. I can't sit up there and work for free. Can you pay me? See, the thing is, dog, most people want to be compensated for their time when their time is not worth much at this point. At this point. So also, I want to let the audience know, um, behind the scenes in the culture, they don't know how many people that's in the business actually know who I am. They just act like they don't know who I am publicly. But when you speak to people and you mention my name, they'll give you the whole rundown on me and everything. So I want mm -hmm. you to let the audience know that the people who they love, that they think, oh, nobody know who he is, they all know who I am. They're like every last one of them. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to tell you the biggest one is Charlemagne the God is a huge Doggy Diamonds fan. Mm -hmm. Charlemagne the God, everybody up in Black Effect Network, they know who you are. Mm -hmm. They know who you are. You're a big piece. You know, even when I was talking to T one day, she said, oh, I mess with Doggy mm -hmm. Diamonds. You know, so there are a whole bunch of people, man, to sing your praises. Because like you said, you were very influential in kind of like that whole genre to where you just like the unfiltered truth mm -hmm. about people, things, and places, you know, that we've took. And, I, you know, I want to land back on Charleston White, right? Uh -huh. See, this is the key to things. And I'm going to tell people in the audience. Mm -hmm. Now, you're cre it's a culture that's been created within podcasting to where People base everything on what they see on YouTube. So if they see a guy talking crazy and go on YouTube and get a million views, they think that that's, oh, that's the formula right there. I'm going to tell you, and I truly believe this, I believe if people wipe, if somebody were to go out and wipe feces on their face mm -hmm. and they got two million views from it, you would start seeing a whole lot of videos like that. People putting doodle <laughs> on their face. Yeah, yeah, because it is a lot of... Uh you see it being done and it looks like it's successful at that being done. So people want to uh, emulate a lot of, a lot of stuff. So what is our responsibility as media? Cause you're media. Now you're also one of the um, executive producers, but producers and creator of the gangster Chronicles. Let's let's let that be known. You are, I remember, let me tell you about the gangster Chronicles really quick. One day, um, still called me and said, yo, I want to do this show called the gangster Chronicles. I got to find the host. He said, I don't want to host it. I don't want to do a podcast, but I got to find the host, but I got the idea for a show and I want to find the host. So needless to say, you found the host. We went through a couple of hosts, 
but you actually put the show together like it was your brainchild mm -hmm. and it was your idea, which you eventually had to fill in and sit in the seat. And despite what people see on YouTube with the Gangster Chronicles, them audio numbers, you showed me that shit. I almost fell on the floor. Them oh, the, the Gangster Chronicles is a million downloaded. They get a million downloads a month. That show doesn't have to mess with YouTube at all. Yo. It, it doesn't have to mess with YouTube at all. Why you showed me them numbers that day? I almost fell on the floor. It was like, holy. Well, you know, dog, <laughs> it was true. It was um for twofold to show you that it can be done. Yes. It can yeah. be done, but you have to look at it like this. It took, Gangsta Chronicles is now at this point three years old. Mm -hmm. It took three years to get that done, bro. Yes. But that was with us three years sacrificing, not going on YouTube and not doing, basing our whole six races around YouTube and really keeping it as a podcast. It's a podcast. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. It's not a talk show. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. It's, it's really formatted. It has been formatted in the past for audio. More for audio than video. Mm -hmm. More yeah. so for audio than video, which is why it has the success it has. And I keep telling people that you got to get your audio strong, especially if you talk about you got a podcast, because what happens is people reach a point to where they getting they got a pretty good base going on. Don't I'm not gonna front. You can make good money on YouTube. YouTube is not a bad platform to be on, man. You have millionaires on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you definitely have, I, I would say more so than the millionaires, you have people making very good six-figure incomes. Mm -hmm. Just from sitting in their living room with a couch or their car, wherever, talking shit, I think it's beautiful, man. I think the more we free media, the more opinions you can get and the more stars we're going to discover in the future. Because I, I, I'm going to tell you something about Charleston White that I love, and I'm going to keep going back to him. Charleston White is the common man. Mm -hmm. He's not a tough guy. He's maybe maybe five, six mm -hmm. with some shoes on. Mm -hmm. He has a, a he's blind in one eye. But I'm going to tell you, that man talks shit and swallows spit and will back <laughs> up anything that he says and will shoot your ass. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for saying that. You might yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah well, and, he will, and he will clap your ass. Yeah, so yeah, don't yeah, get yeah. it twisted. But he's going to call the police first because he's a <laughs> common man. He is not a gangster. We have to, what we're seeing now, man, and it's sad, is people are trying to mix penitentiary culture and street culture with business culture. It just doesn't mean. Charleston White is doing what he's supposed to do as a man. If he tells you, if you threaten him, he gonna call the police on your ass. Mm -hmm. That's the common man. He's not a gangster. He got, he's not stuck to the little dumbass codes that people got in the streets. Mm -hmm. He's a common man. Um, media right now, but we do see a lot of people popping up saying that they're media, they're media, they're media. Uh, is it messing stuff up and helping it? Or helping? Because that's what the, the, the name of this video is podcast. Messing up our culture or helping our culture? What do you think? I overall? would definitely say at the end of the day, doggy, it has definitely helped the culture because you have people making money mm -hmm. that otherwise maybe wouldn't be making money. Okay. You know, guys that may not have college degrees because at the end of the day, I got a college degree. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do none of this stuff. If I just wanted to sell out and just say, you know what, man, I can go make me 150, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and not have to deal with none of this stuff. I can go do that. And, and you got a son in the NFL, but we- And I have and I have a son in the NFL. So it's Facts, like, I don't have yeah. to deal with this stuff and I don't have to steal money from nobody. Yes. Because most of the time when I'm talking to these show hosts, I'm looking at them like, do you know I got a podcast that do a million downloads a month? Mm -hmm. and yeah. why, like, why would I try to take something from you and it's, and it's licensed to one of the biggest companies in the world. So why would I have to take something from you? It, 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 it wouldn't benefit us none. Yes. Yes. So, um, but what is, okay. So when you do this podcast and you get this podcast and you're doing it correctly, in your opinion, what is your responsibility now to the culture? Your responsibility to the culture is say whatever is on your mind, but just make sure it's factual. Mm -hmm. Just make sure whatever you say is factual. And then what you want to do, you want to run the risk and rewards type of thing, because I have, dog, we and you have had conversations offline. I have news. I have stuff up in my dome, man, to where if I ever decided to just go online and get the girly muffin, man, it would be 20 million, 30 million views. But people, these are real people we're talking about. People with real lives and this real life, and in real life, there are real life consequences. Now, now I wanna now I wanna put that out there because unfortunately, when Nipsey got hit 
you called me right on the spot. Yo, man, they just they just hit Nipsey. Oh, now what we I didn't do, you saw it in real time. But what we didn't do, and we could have probably mm -hmm. made ten thousand dollars off it, broke the news, Nipsey Hustle gunned down. Cause you you called me like, yo, bro. Mm -hmm. They just got nip, and I'm like, who? He's like, yo, we don't know yet, but it ain't look. You told me it ain't looking too good. Well, this was this is how the call went. A lot of I managed glasses, Malone. Mm -hmm. Glasses was over my house. We were sitting in my kitchen. I, I'm a really good cook. I just got finished cooking, mm -hmm. so we were about to sit down and eat and shop up some business, right? Glasses kept giving me Facetime phone calls, right? From this one guy we know over here, I'm gonna name nameless. He was from behind the car showing us when Nip was getting gunned down, dude. And it was the most like crazy stuff because me and Glasses is kind of scrambling at this point. But you know, I live in the suburbs, dog. I wouldn't go get to where he was at. And it wasn't my business to go where he was at anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. not a crip. Mm -hmm. But Nip is cool though. Nip is the homie. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to see that happening, right? But it's not nothing we can do. But I'm thinking in my whole mind, and I'm telling, dude, why the fuck is you FaceTiming us? You got a gun because you can see his pistol in the, in the FaceTime. You know, we got you got a gun. Bust, nigga. Bust. Mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. But he's not doing that. So we all there kind of panicking. That's when I called you because I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, dog, I think they just got nipped. Yeah, you Because was you couldn't be sure because from the angles that we were seeing the phone. So think about this. A man called us to broadcast another man's murder. Yeah. And, and you was like, yo, bro, it don't look good. You was like, yo, it do not look good. I this don't look good. And again, we I could have ran out. I'm in I'm in New York, so I could have ran out. New breaking news in New York, because you got to remember we three hours ahead of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So the media capital of the world, I could have just broke that story. Nipsey Hussle just gunned down in L.A. Oh, oh, and I could have been real ignorant and since you because I could have told Glasses, hey, just man, record me, yeah. that, you know, record, screen record that thing, man, and, and we go send the doggy down. But that's not it, bro. I didn't want to do it. At the end of the day, yeah. Nip is a world-renowned rapper, but Nip is also somebody's father, somebody's son, somebody's brother. That was sad to me, man. Yeah, no. Nah, I, I, I don't... I, I don't want to profit off of misery. Digital soapbox does not profit yes. off of other people's misery. Facts. Black, white, or whoever. We don't, because these are real people, and that's what people need to realize. When you go online and just drag somebody, you're talking about somebody's father. You're talking about somebody's husband. You're talking about probably uh, somebody's son. You know, so there are a lot more people involved that didn't ask to be dragged into this mess than there are. And the streets have real repercussions. See the internet, nothing is gonna happen to you. You can go on, you can go online and talk shit till you blue in the face or whatever. There are no consequences. But the moment you walk outside your door, somebody can make you stand on what you said. Mm -hmm. Facts. Somebody can somebody can come and make you and force you to stand on all that mess you was talking. So the thing is with me, man, I get so much love. I can go to the Nixon Gardens. I can go to the Pueblos. I can go to I can go anywhere. I can go to Compton, Watts, L.A. and get love because. At the end of the day, I mind my own business. Yes. So um, there is a, a, a big influx of podcasts. The pandemic made everybody a podcaster, though. You know, mm -hmm. um, it, the, what, what did you think about that? I particularly didn't like it. Well, you know what I don't like? Because now what that does, it leaves a bunch of ghost ships. And that's what I mean. So out of every five podcasts that you may see on um, Apple Podcasts, only one of those podcasts updates weekly. Mm. So it kills, it, open, it waters down the game. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, we first came into podcasting, doggy, there were maybe, maybe 100 podcasts, dog. Now it's over 10,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it makes, the, it, it makes the margin for error that much slimmer, and it makes the goal to be successful that much higher because people have to maneuver kind of through the manure to find some real stuff. And 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 uh, and a lot of people don't know to have a moderately successful podcast, you only need like a thousand streams. It's not a lot. It's not big. If you because some people with big shows that you think is big shows, they don't even get a thousand listeners a week. Oh, bro, I would tell you, some <laughs> you have shows on YouTube that may get a million views an episode, but on their audio, they can't get over two thousand. Mm -hmm. Or even a hundred. Some of them are doing that bad. Yeah, some of some of them are doing fifty. You know, units. Then that's why you have people 
you have people that may come in the podcast and you see them do it for a few years and they say it's not no money in it for me. It's the, no, it's not because you ran straight to YouTube instead of you putting in the work on your audio. Because if you have a good podcast, one thing about it, people are going to discover it and they're going to listen. The only reason Gangster Chronicles ever went to video is because we had people asking for it to go to video. So what the pros and cons of being signed, because we see people signing these major deals, some people lying about their numbers, some people, what's, what's the pros and cons of being signed? Because when, when people sign with us, we're just there to help you get some money as far as uh, sales, selling your audio, and we're also there to do your distribution. We're not there to give you $7.8 million for anything because... With a lot of these shows, your show is not worth seven point. It ain't even worth no, <laughs> not especially when you first getting started. And that's what I tell people. I be talking to some of the rapper homies. Man, I sell a million records, dude. Trust me and believe me. I've been through this already. I've tried through trial and error. Just because you sold those records, it doesn't guarantee you you're going to have a successful podcast. Say that again. It just doesn't. Say that Just again. because you've sold a lot of records, that's, it doesn't guarantee you success in the lane of podcast. Aren't we up for another artist, though? We, could we announce that yet, or we got to wait? You told me today. Oh, let's wait for that. We can okay, wait yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to wait until the ink is dry on that. There's so much stuff going on right now, and that's the thing. We expanded. You remember we went through from the transition from Digital Soapbox Network to, to media digital, because... Yep. One thing I figured, I started, I raised the bar as far as who we would sign. Mm -hmm. Because it's just too much work to take somebody from point A to point B. Because the thing about podcasting, your audio could pop in two months or it could take two years. Mm -hmm. It's on you. We're going to walk with you along that whole time. We're going to walk with you on that journey to make it happen. But you got to be willing to go in for the long haul because you got to remember, even without us giving somebody an advance, we are still putting money into that show every month from the hosting. everything the from hosting, hosting it, mm -hmm. hosting it to uh, running ads for it, um, all kind of stuff. You know, it's like you have a, a least uh, us as a podcast network just for the most basic things for the, our hosting stuff. That's about a five thousand dollar a month bill. Oh, you forgot we got Big Court too. <laughs> you forgot? Oh yeah, oh, for sure. Shout out to the Big homie Court. Big Court. Yeah, shout out to Big, Big Court. Court. Yeah, and, and and we, I mean, and we had uh, you know, one of the the, the females, um, there was an actress, and again, this is not just do a show and your celebrity from what you used to do. That don't mean people want to hear you. It's very. And we're not going. We're not going to bring her name up, but she was actually a real cool person. Yeah, it's not. But to her be expectations yeah. were just so unrealistic because I was excited when she hit me up initially. Mm -hmm. Then when I looked at her analytics and I saw that she was like 300 episodes in on her podcast and it was only getting like 25 or 30 people listening to it, I was like, this is going to be rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we still got to sell it. We yeah, still have to sell we, it. Yeah, we still got to sell it to the people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I do most of the day, right? People think, um, because I get a lot of people that call my phone, dog, and the biggest knock on me, man, you don't answer your phone because I don't have time to be on the phone. I'm working. Yo, and and people don't even know. I might call you. I don't speak to you for a couple of days sometimes. I call you like we speak like every other day, but sometimes I call you and you don't answer. It don't. I don't feel yeah, no way. It, it's not because so. I, that's what I tell people. It's not like I'm sitting there ignoring your phone call. Not only do I have to deal with a the show that that I'm on, right? I have to deal with nine, ten other shows. And mm -hmm. them and their complaints, I need to be available for them. And my main job is not really to be a uh, complaint line and be the homie line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing business together. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to keep that business going, we need to sell advertising. So I'm on the phone with people every day like Rooster Teeth. Mm -hmm. That's another podcast network that we just, you know, I, I can announce that we just partnered up with Rooster Teeth. We're going to be doing some things with them. Um, they you know, just got purchased by Warner Brothers, so we're doing some things with them, man. And just establishing the contacts we got, like, you know, like um, Dolly Bishop, she's the head of the Black Effect Podcast Network. You know, Charlamagne the God's mm -hmm. podcast network. You know, me talking to her, great person, mm -hmm. great individual. Um, I love it because um, these are some of the pros of it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when I go into my meetings, man, I'm talking to all these Black women that are just cool as can be, dog. And they really want the best for you. Mm -hmm. It ain't, it, it's not dry. It, it's a real pure relationship. You know what I mean? Um, I can hit Dolly on a Sunday afternoon and she go get back to me. Mm -hmm. I also was telling the people that when we was at um, 
Intercom. That's what it was called, Intercom. Because CBS uh, and Viacom, Intercom is all the same company. BT, all the same stuff. Um, it was tough for them to sell urban media because oh, th- th- we got a major problem. Yeah, that's we got to talk. We got to talk about that because the the type of topics that we cover, they can't sell our stuff to advertisers because it's urban. So they want to give us the blue chews. They want to give us liquor. I don't drink or smoke, and I ain't into all that. So we was passing on a lot of that stuff. Like, nah, we can't sell no liquor. I can't do no vape and stuff. Tell them about the ads still. I don't think they know. If we took, because we talked about this earlier today, if we took every ad, we'd be rich. But we had to turn it down because that's not, it don't work for us. Well, some stuff, you have to very much have integrity in what you're doing because my thing is this. If I have a show that's sort of a family-friendly show, Mm -hmm. I can't go to them with a blue choose read because it's too sexually subjective. Mm -hmm. You know, so I give every host a choice on what they want to have. You know, I get you guys up to the email. Mm -hmm. Do you approve of this? What do you think about this? They have their option. You know, um, I'll tell you one time we had a show... um, they had lucked up and we got this beer company. They wanted to give this show a sponsorship. Um, and it was like a $40,000 sponsorship. And at that time, we really could have used that money, bro. The girl that was on the show, her younger brother had died in a drink, drunk, drunk driving. Mm-hmm. Miss that. Mm-hmm. You know, he lost his life to a drunk driver. So there's no way in good faith I could be mad at this girl for not wanting to take an alcohol at. Mm-hmm. I commended her. Mm-hmm. I commended her. I could have been really just vulgarious about it. I'm like, no, you're going to take this. You in the whole Can we get our cut? This yeah, we, this is how we going to get our cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, that, that's her choice. That's her choice. And the thing with brands, man, this is how it is. A brand just, when they pick a show, it's because they thoroughly vetted that show that it has the audience that they want to reach. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just not like, you know, I hear people, man, go get me a Target sponsorship. It's like, dude, you got a 90% male base. Target is not interested in you. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can do something with, um, maybe we can do something with. Um, we got the Raycon before. We got Express VPN. Yeah. And we got exactly, Manscaped. Exactly. And we got Manscaped. We had that read for Manscaped was out of control. But we, but my Manscaped is over there somewhere. So we did get though, we did get a lot of advertising. Yeah. But we had yeah, to we, turn down a lot. We turned down yeah, we a had lot. To turn down, we had to turn down a lot of stuff. And again, like you get a show like, I don't want to put that narrative out there that it ain't no money in podcasting because it's obviously you know, it's just it is so money. many people mm-hmm. doing it trying to get to it. But the path to that money is not going to come to you for free. You're going to really have to work for it mm-hmm. because I'm going to tell you, no, I think an ad in the Gangster Chronicles is worth like $9,000 now, dog. Ain't that crazy? Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. We're like nine or ten grand now. It's crazy. You know what I mean? But, it's just but, it, was, but it was some companies that was telling you I can't sell that show oh, because it's called. I'm gonna go back to the, yeah. yeah, it's called, it's the, called Gangster the Gangster Chronicle. Chronicle. I can't sell nothing called the Gangster. Well, I was told by a white executive from CBS, from Intercom, mm-hmm. no longer CBS Intercom, because I would talk to her, and every time I talked to her, she kept raising the benchmark. The first time we spoke, she said, "Well, Norm, if you can get the show up to five to ten thousand an episode during the first thirty day period." We can start really going at the, you know, sponsors for you guys. So, boom, we hit the mark faster than I expected, like a month, right? Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. month after the show came out, we was at six thousand. Said, "Hey, here we go." Well, you probably need to be more at fifteen thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kept moving. It the just changed that much. Then it moved up to twenty five. But I'm gonna tell you when I called shenanigans, bro. I called shenanigans when I saw shows that were doing less numbers than us getting advertisements. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And remember, that, remember it was one time, the internet is about that dumb again, but they probably still could see it. Remember it was one time, they didn't even want to cut the ad. Remember we had to say, yo, cut our ads on. Remember it was one time like, yo, can you cut the, the programmatic ads on at least? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they didn't even want to cut the ads or, oh, you need to have this. I'm like, yo, listen, why are y'all making this difficult? Because when we make money, you make money. 
So I remember the yeah. same person telling me, yo, your show is doing very well. Wow, I can't believe, you know, you get that many stuff. So I'm like, so where is uh where's my where's my ads at? Oh, you know, you know, it, it's tough. Would you do I think she asked me to do um it wasn't a it wasn't a it was something sexual. It wasn't no dildo shit, but it was something along the line of something sexual. And I'm like, Oh, I ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not doing that. Like, why would I do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, that don't fit my audience. I so again, when you in this podcast game, the 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 road to the money, because y'all getting hype. Yo, he just signed this, he just signed that. And I always add, I'm gonna ask you this. Look how the show started. Look where it's at now, these shows. So what happens is they had to change some things. For them to get that. So if you want, if you like this show, Raw and Uncut, watch how they change from that Raw and Uncut to get certain monies. And you start seeing them oh, playing, sure. acting stupid. Nah, mm -hmm. all that rawness. Yeah, all that raw shit is gone because they trying to get money. So what you love them for, they're not going to stay on that path because they're trying to get money. And I remember when I went into um the intercom building, you know, I was like, yo. What can I say and what can I say? Because I ain't want to get Kanye West. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what's off limits? What can I, because I have no filter. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I do want to shout out them in that building because they, we, I had a lot of fun there. You know what I'm saying? But the, just the relationship just didn't work. And we walked out of there. Um, Wasn't no beef. But also when, when people have your RSS feed, remember, you moved that RSS feed fast because we would have lost all the shows. Yeah, so, you know, I had to move the RSS feed over just because I didn't want, you know, you can get years of somebody's work just be lost in the instant, in the click of a mouse. Yep, a click of a mouse. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to say, man, is that what was happening at CBS wasn't actually their fault because as I started getting more seasoned and started seeing how these different agencies work, you have to remember they're pretty much, there are a million different agencies to sell podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are only five or six that truly matter. Mm -hmm. You have to be really careful about dealing with fly-by-night companies because a lot of these people are just middlemen going on shit like advertised cast and, you know, signing you up for advertised cast and trying to get 20% for some shit that you could have went and did yourself. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they're actually vetted and they're actually talking to real agencies and they're not just trying to get you because you'll wind up losing a lot of money like that. And we found out people with a podcast on um soundcloud it was somebody that was like that number don't count because people are buying soundcloud numbers and it what is the thing that it has to be under for it to count that it has to be um it has to be iab compliant don't yes, ask yeah. me what the acronym stands for but yeah. it has to be iab compliant because those numbers like so like let's take the gangster chronicles for example get a million downloads a month right mm -hmm. It might really be getting more than that, mm -hmm. but that's what the final count is. They really want to make sure because what it is, you have brands paying a lot of money for advertising. You want to make sure that you're delivering their message to as many real fans as they possibly can get, or you can call, you can bankrupt the company like yeah. that. Yeah. Let's say a company decides to spend two, $3 million on the campaign, but the campaign, they were promised to reach 30, 40 million people, but in actuality, they reached a couple hundred thousand. That could be disastrous to a company's bottom line. And they did something. I remember um, they, because they will move the goalposts on you. Because I remember saying, listen, I need these big ads, man. I got this interview with such and such coming, and they will come in the building. They will see them come in intercom. That will put their name on the list. And then I showed them the YouTube. Look, this has 400,000 views on the interview. And the audio got 15,000 and they say, well, out of the 400,000, we can only count about 5,000 of that. I'm like, what the hell you told me? Because again, when you go to the companies, when you want to show them your YouTube, they don't, they be like, yo, YouTube don't count. We don't count. They don't YouTube. care because, you know, and I used to think that was BS at first, but then as I got more seasoned in the business and started looking at it, I understood why they only could count a certain portion of those numbers. Because of you have certain, you have two different type of fans. You have real fans that everything you upload, they're they going to be there. Mm -hmm. You have some people they're just passing through for the conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So they're not going to support nothing that you're doing. So they had to only they had to knock out a bunch of it because YouTube does have a lot of pedestrian traffic. And I try to tell some of the brothers on YouTube that say they got podcasts and they telling their um you know some of them been through prison and they got their prison stories. And I try to tell them, yo, if you put that on audio, package the audio and sell the audio. Crime and punishment is like one of the biggest categories. You might be able to get some bread for that, but they won't mm -hmm. listen to me. They won't leave YouTube. They won't leave StreamYard. They in love with it. So again, I can't. What do I know, right? What do what do I guess? Because they like the, the one thing about this culture. They they how many people say to you, yo, still he got mad views. Yo, listen, look at his views, and and you be like, yo, I just did a hundred thousand views in audio. So when I show my um my my thing like yo my podcast is over a hundred thousand views on my audio, people think that's not a big deal because they might look at a video and see twenty seven thousand well, views. Right? Well, yeah, I'm, well I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this: you can't compare the audio to the um you, you you can't compare the audio numbers to the video numbers because audio numbers from a podcast are people that are really fans of that show they're really involved in the show they're invested into the show because they've taken the time to download a particular app yes. to go subscribe to that show to get alerts when that when the new episode is up right mm -hmm. so that fan is more than likely to su go support and this is all stuff that's research driven like we didn't make the rules up it's just what it is yeah mm -hmm. a fan that listens to a podcast is 10 times more likely to buy an ad and merch from a trusted source than they are on YouTube because again, you're talking about pedestrian traffic versus somebody that wants to be somewhere. They're not just coming for a special moment, they're for all the moments. And also YouTube views, subscribers, comments, likes, all that can be purchased. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong, doggy. I don't want to make it sound like that we just coming down hard on YouTubers, right? Because no, but we are though. No, because there's a difference between a YouTuber and a podcast, and we yeah, have it to is differentiate. Very much a different. We have to it differentiate is very much different. because I feel like a lot of people are clogging the lane of the language of I'm a podcast, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you can be, but right now you're not. You have a you YouTube a show, so just like, strip like, the audio of the of the show. Put it in podcast format, and you got a podcast. It's just really that simple. I, you know, I'm giving you information because still, with our infantile company, that's still infantile because it's only five years old, right? A five year old is still a baby. They're a toddler, mm -hmm. but they're still a baby, right? So our company is only five years old. Look at what we learned in five years and all the sacrifices that we went through to try to get where we are today. Yeah, it's definitely, man, like it feels like graduation time has happened, right? Yeah. You know, when stuff when stuff really started clicking and we actually started making money as a company, mm -hmm. and it was like, okay, it's cool. And you were always going to have ups and downs in any venture, especially when it's independent in nature, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't have, um, you know, we're just now getting that to where we got people that are investing into what we are doing. You yes. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're just now getting that in the last year or so, so. It's like this. It's been a long, it's been a long climb, but it definitely didn't happen overnight. Definitely. And we, and we pretty much, even though we do ventures with other companies, we're pretty much independent, you know, we're, we're independent and you know, the gangster Chronicles was a situation with black effect, but that's still digital soapbox network. Um, I got some stuff going on. I'm still digital soapbox network, but you in the future, you're going to see me partner up with a company, but this is the parent company. We just do partnerships. So when you see people, when you see us sign with people, they're not uh, when, when they're not absorbing our company into their company. See, some people are signing away their whole IP away. We never did mm -hmm. that, and we're not doing that. And the oh people yeah, you know, and that's the thing. Um, we actually had a situation come this around the same time Black Effect came, but they offered us a nice little amount of money, yes. but. They want. They would have been pretty much purchasing the show, and we became employees of the show, and that they could switch out at leisure or do what they wanted to. And I said, "Well, no, you know, maybe down the line, I might. Sometimes it makes sense to sell." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, because you over it. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, you know, you it. over yeah. it. You yeah. get over it sometimes. And that was the thing because I never had intentions on becoming a podcaster. No, I had. I to, told people that from the beginning. I had to beg you, still, you gotta be the host, like you, it, because it, again, the Gangster Chronicles was your idea, it was your baby, so. Whoever the host was never really mattered because it was your idea. Even though we had some great hosts, um, and still have great hosts, 
but it was your idea. So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, if this happens with this person, this will happen with this person. You got to pick up the slack. So, you know, what, what you end up doing. Um, so I don't want people to think that because it was a big, big misconception that you wanted to always be the host. If you wanted to be the host. No, I would have just made myself the host from the beginning. From the beginning. You never known those other individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, you know that, but let's go back to the internet, doggy. That's one thing that I believe needs to happen more. People need to know that just because you hear somebody saying something online, don't, mean don't it's make true. it fact. Yep, yeah. Don't, don't, it, it don't mean it's true because a lot of stuff I just let fly right over my head because it's an exercise You're good at that. Utility. Yo, you, you yo, know? this man is good at letting bullshit just, man, I ain't paying no attention to that. Me on the other hand, I want to crack your fucking head. I'm, a, I'm looking for you and not saying he don't. But he'll just let a rumor be a rumor. He don't address a lot of stuff because it's a lot of stuff that you heard pertaining to him that's just not true. And sometimes I'd be like, yo, nah, let me get him. And he'd be like, man, I ain't sweating that shit. The business is still booming. We still moving. But, you know, I've always had the mentality that an uncontested lie starts to look like the truth. And it is narratives that people are running with. It is people who still butt hurt to this day. And they're just lying. And You're you just, know, the, the thing about those individuals is they made, they're mad about decisions that they made. Facts. I've never forced anyone to do anything. They made decisions. And, and see, what happens, man, is that there's nothing wrong with having confidence in what you do. You're supposed to be confident in what you do. But when that confidence kind of morphs into an arrogance, you're about to play yourself because you're not as big. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to mention his name. The main guy that was running around talking about he was the man against the Chronicles can't get 200 views on the video now. Wah, 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 wah. So Gangsta Chronicles evidently helped him more than he helped it, but that was his first time tasting success because, see, I'm going to tell you this. Success is like weed, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a good strain of marijuana. You get some people that can try a good strain, and they may never smoke again, or they may smoke a month or two later, but it doesn't consume their life. You get some people to hit some good weed, and the first time they want that feeling all day, every day. Now they're waking up in the morning smoking, they're going to work high. Next thing you know, they lose their job. Next thing you know, they're at home playing video games all day, getting high. Shout out to Brian in the building, Smooth Cut Production. Shout out to Brian. That's definitely yeah. the 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 um one of the producers, one of the editors, one of the cameramen. Definitely um instrumental in this. The company. chief editor. The, yeah. the chief editor. Yeah. For yeah the, that's Soul that. Box Media. So when you see Smooth Cut Production, that's the homie Brian. Definitely instrumental in everything that we and do. And that's another thing that people need to understand. And he sacrificed that. a lot to be with us because it was times where. He did. He couldn't get a million dollars. He couldn't get ten thousand dollars. But he still, he still run with us because he understood the long game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And everybody in this business don't understand the long game. They just hear such and such is cast out, and they think I'm a liar when I say, "Yo, them niggas is lying," or they think I'm a hater. I'd be like, "Yo, them niggas is lying." There is no money like that in this. You understand what but, I'm saying? But you know what, doggy? The, the thing is that you always have to remember, man, is that a fan only knows what they see or hear, right? Mm -hmm. They don't know the back things. It's like when people think about digital soapbox, unfortunately, they just think about me on the business side a lot mm -hmm. because I'm kind of the figurehead. But man, we got, what, 11 people that work for us now. Facts. Oh, yeah, shout out to Autumn, too. That's my girl, Autumn. Yeah, shout you know, out to Autumn. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we got 11 people. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we just, it's like the company is growing, so it's just not me. I couldn't do it by myself. Facts. I couldn't do it by myself because the thing is... Doggy is doing what he's supposed to do. He's the host of Doggy Diamonds No Filter, which is a business within itself. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of time that goes into producing the podcast. I think people just think people just come in and just sit down and just decide, oh, we just go talk. No, you have conversations about the format of the show, the structure of it, to where tonight we have a conversation on the live, right? But when you're doing the show, man, you have show notes, you have a time clock. And you see, you I do all my artwork. Stuff. I just I do all my artwork. I got everything. And what people don't understand is that, um, shit, I got a six figure a year business on my own. You know what I'm saying? Besides the company, I got my own business. You know what I'm saying? And, and I have to make sure, remember you were saying, yo, bro, do what you got to do. Make sure you eating. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a long game for us. And, and you know, we've been down for each other. Um, and you know, it's funny. Did we ever have an argument? 
You know what I mean? You ain't never had an argument. We've had disagreements, but we ain't never had an argument. And I that's think, the thing. I See, think you wanted when, me, I think our first disagreement, you wanted me to do the top 20 or something. I'm like, man, I ain't doing that shit. You was like, why not? I'm like, yo, I don't want to do that shit. In the beginning, like I said, when you first met me, yo, yo, if it wasn't for Steel, man, I would have fucked a lot of y'all up. I'm telling you right now. Any of y'all in New York, I would have whooped you out because that was my, I was like, yo, Steel, I'm running down on you. He's like, yo, don't do that. Don't worry about it. I'm like, nah, hands and feet when we meet. And you taught me out of a lot because you told me it's a long game. Some of these same people, they going to come back around and watch how certain people end up. Remember, I used to be used to be like, yo, watch how they end up. That mouth, that information they put out, they going to have to atone for that. And I used to be like, nah, this shit ain't happening fast enough, man. I got to fuck them up. And, you know and that's the thing. And, and this is especially dangerous right now because... There's a lot of stuff on the internet now that never should make its way to the internet. See, the streets need to stay in the streets. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of stuff being said online because, again, people don't think that there are consequences until something sad happens. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about, to a certain extent, it could be messing stuff up because it is stuff that people who think they're in media now are saying. But as media, you do have a responsibility for what comes out of your mouth to the public, especially if you have an audience, because people do get hurt behind the shit you do and say while you somewhere mm -hmm. safe playing on a fucking computer. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. And I tell that to a lot of out of town people, the people that live outside of Cali. Yeah. That want to get, you know, Cali street cats on there and they talk mess because it sounds good. It sounds sexy. It's sensational. It's salacious. But. You really gonna get somebody hurt with that bullshit. Like when I came out there raided out, you was like, yo, nah, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, you know, don't, don't go over there, man. He's like, no, nah, don't go over there. They gonna think you from insane. I'm like, the fuck is insane? What are you talking about? So I again, when you move around, because I done been to Cali a few times, when you move around, when you are a personality and people could recognize you, you gotta know how to move around because some of the things that you might have said you have to now navigate in this world. Yeah, and you know, you're going to, I'm going to tell you, I was just back in Ohio, man, uh, maybe two months ago, mm -hmm. three months ago. Mm -hmm. I'm walking in the grocery store, bro. I'm tripping up. You know, I'm a big cereal person, so I'm tripping yeah, up because yeah, I know every right, part of the yeah. region mm -hmm. got different cereals. So I found the Fruit Loops with the marshmallows in them. I said, oh, man, so I'm buying 10 boxes of them, you know, so... I get a dude to just run down on me. Man, what you doing out here, man? Like, he's my long-lost friend. And I kind of had to keep my guard up because I was thinking, like, what if this dude, is he going to try to don't feed me and put yeah. me on camera or something? You know what I mean? So you always have to be conscious of that. But when you don't give that energy off, you always will get love most of the time. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah, had yeah. a problem. I've never had a problem in the streets with somebody with something I said. And that's why I always tell people and I give any of my detractors that option. Like, look, dude, you making all these YouTube videos about me. If it's really a problem, let's go box and get a money to charity. Facts. Fact. I'll give you three months to get your shit together. I give we give each other three months to go whatever. I don't need to try out because the ain't nobody boxing them, you. How to tell them how tall you are. Like six, four and a half, six five. <laughs> ain't nobody boxing. We, we can go, we can go box, but if it's a conflict like that, because some of this stuff, doggy, the thing is, man, why entertain a lot? Yeah. It would be like somebody going online saying, man, Steel is a transvestite. Yeah. I would think that was the funniest shit ever, dog. I would, I would laugh at that. Yeah. Why acknowledge it? Why be mad? Because it's not true. What I didn't like, though, because I was feeling like it was a narrative being spent about you. And when they attacked you, they were starting to, I felt like they're attacking the business. Now, I'm the other half of the business. So if yeah. you attack him in the business, hold on. I got to find you and whoop your ass because I'm closer to you. You understand what I'm saying? He's all mm -hmm. the way on the West Coast. I'm going to find you and whoop your ass because if you said still did something, that means that I did it too and I was aware of it. That's not what happened. But I felt like in this game, and that's what I was saying, some of the things can mess it up. The clout of mentioning names, the clout of throwing people away actually works for them. Because it makes it seem like, oh, nah, they do shady business over there. And I'm like, that shit is dope. That's far from but the But again, truth. though, doggy, this is where my reward comes in. I never had to say nothing about that stuff because now you can just go look at that YouTube channel. And I know you know, we're not talking about YouTube, but since we use them as a measuring stick, before, when you were with me, mm -hmm. doing this, 
Now you're doing this. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have to say nothing. Yeah, it yeah. shows in itself. So I think, man, the, the ego is a powerful thing, man. And, and really, I like staying positive, doggy. I like keeping my energy good. I don't want BS around me. I don't want to be involved in a bunch of negativity. I don't want to be involved in a bunch of arguments. Because first of all, I'm 52 years old. And man. you be in church and every I'm, Sunday, too. <laughs> and I go to church every Sunday. Yeah, and facts, I love yeah. God. I look, I'm all about God and family, family dog. Yeah, no, nah, that's that, a fact. that order. Yeah. I'm all about God and family because rain, hell, sleet, and snow. When you called me on Sunday morning, dog, you were my head at you. You in church. You in church. And I got to call you because you three hours away. So I got to call you at noon because I know it's 9 a.m. But what I will say upon um, me meeting you, you've always been very close to your um, your wife, your children, and you just really haven't been messy. And all we do is talk about business and advice and ways to grow as men, ways to grow as business and ways to grow in this. And remember I said to you, what I call you, say, yo, bro, get on that such and such because this month, this, that, and the third. I said, yo, I'm oh, yeah, reminding sure. you to such and such. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. even when the, and, and that's what I say to people, they take, you know, because the knock on me that they try to knock me for is, oh, you got this. This person get more views than you. I say, yo, I'm a part of more shit than you know. I don't have More to. Than you imagine. Yeah, I don't have dog. to. I don't have to flex. Like it's we. It's cool. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm it's a, cool. I'm, but I'm gonna tell you, bro. Where your true power gonna come in is not by letting people know nothing you're doing. I'm gonna tell you. If you notice with me, I don't tell nobody what we have planned. Facts. I don't tell nobody what's happening. I don't tell people when we get big signings. You know why? Because. Just like the, I'm going to tell you something about the power of words and energy, dude. Mm -hmm. Just like God answers prayers. Mm -hmm. The devil too, too. <laughs> the devil does too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to give a hater ammunition for him to go pray to his hater God that I fail. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't need to have them know because I'm not looking for their approval. Because I'm going to tell you this, in order for me to take an emotional stance on something, that means that we would have to have been friends or something from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, none of these people were my friends. They were people that I was, they were Doing business. business so. Yeah. And when the business goes sour, they act like the friendship went sour. No, mm -hmm. it wasn't no friendship. It was and business. and with, with the one person in particular, he just disappeared from the show one day. And, and for reasons of his own, he gonna give you 20 different reasons why he did it. I don't pay no attention to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's not worth my time. And I'm like, I feel good, dog. You know, I just had surgery on my knee, bro. I just had, you know, a Re knee yeah. replacement, man. You know, I played football and stuff, so I finally got it done, man, because I wanted to have it done before the new year started, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, man, life is really good right now, and we have so much negative stuff in the world. <clears throat> See, the thing is this. Negativity only wins when everybody starts participating. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ever participate, and I'm not going to ever go give that to audience yeah. because you have power in your words, dog. If I get on here talking a bunch of negative stuff about who I'm going to slap around, this and that, dog, I'm bringing death upon myself. I love it, though. I love I, You know me. I'm, I'm some, Sometimes you got some people. And don't get me wrong, bro. Don't, don't get me yeah. wrong. There's a few people I would love to just go whoop their ass. <laughs> right. But I realize my responsibility to the grand theme of things. Because, see, if I'm out there beating people up, we can't go do big deals for for, for, um, for lovely TTV and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember you. Not... Yeah, because I remember you saying to me, um, you call me sometimes like, "Yo, you sitting down? <clears throat> Yo, we such and such." And I'm like, "Ooh, ooh, they they have no idea." So again, um, I, I keep a lot of stuff under wraps, you know, for the people who just think. Oh, you just a dude on YouTube. That's fine. I don't have anything to prove. I don't have anything. Yeah, to prove. But, but 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 again, bro, you gotta look at this too. When you try to go seek the approval of fools, you become a fool yourself. Facts. So I, I don't seek the approval of, of, of um, what somebody else got going on. I'm always saluting people. If I hear about somebody else getting a check, I'm happy for it. Especially a black man, dude. Facts. To me, that's powerful. I'm like, man, that brother, when the guy, he made a better life for his family. Good for him. But, because that's what it should be about at the end of the day. It should be about you making a better life for yourself and the people around you. But again, and I'm glad you said that because didn't I again, bro, when 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 you first told me we got that situation at um Intercom, I was telling you, send him paperwork, send him paperwork, send him paperwork. And we sent paperwork <clears throat> to various people and they and you was like, yo, if that's your man, why he won't sign with you? If that's your man, why they don't sign with you? And you, yo, I ain't gonna front, you warned me about some people, and everything just ended up coming into fruition. And it was just weird because I'm like, damn, how 
my partner all the way from the West Coast was able to see something that I didn't see because I was doing friendship shit. But no, but they, a lot of people wasn't into business. And that's when I learned, hold on, people are my homie that I think, but when it come to business, they're not tight with business because I, we gave out a lot of paperwork to people and they just wouldn't sign it. Oh yeah, well you know the thing is, doggy man. I'm gonna tell you a, a powerful thing, man. I want you to always remember this, man. Is that we always talk about the power of speech, but there is even more power in silence and just observation. Mm -hmm. If you sit back and observe someone long enough, you're gonna see, you're gonna know what they next. Because some of these people out here that spout like they're just the most intellectual people on the earth are actually the most fragile people, and they're easy to break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is just look at their pattern. A lot of them are super sensitive, hyper emotional, narcissistic. Uh, mm -hmm. Narcissistic. Everything is everybody else's fault. And if you look at it, they've fallen out with everybody they've been associated with, but it's always somebody else's fault. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they're, yeah. And they're mad all the time. So when you look at them, the way you kill that person is just ignore them because yeah. they really just want your attention. That's, that's what, all it is. That's what I do now. I don't even pay attention to a lot of people, and I say, well. Damn, you missed the boat. Maybe this wasn't for you. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, everybody who I know that were doing, that even wasn't doing media, I was like, yo, I got this going on. Fuck with me. Yo, create a show. I, I did, And they just didn't want to do it. And then they end up creating shows, but then it became YouTube shows. You know what I'm saying? Well, you so, know what I'm glad about? And I'm glad we signed none of them dudes. Because all of them turned out to be trash. Facts, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and again, um, we're not mouth babysitters. We're not mouth babysitters, and we let people express themselves how they want to express themselves. But it is a code of conduct in business, and I had to learn that again when I first got in the intercom building. Listen, I'm walking through CBS where Don Imus was at. I'm walking, and again, it ain't nothing but white folk. You know what I'm saying? I don't see none of us in there. It's, I'm walking in there. You know, um, and I got passes. And when I get there, I'm walking um, and I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? And and what I did was I, 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 I just wanted to make sure that I was representing us as a company and as a culture. I, that was very important to me. It was very important to represent us as as a company and a culture. And um. I think I did a good job when we was there, but when it was time to go, it was time to go. And and look, did we ever trash them? We never trashed them. So, but it's people mm -hmm. who that we don't do business with that will say negative shit. We, I, you never heard me say nothing bad about them. I just said they couldn't yeah, sell. And, and you know the thing about that, even going back to them guys that see, and this is how I really feel, doggy. Even those guys that may have trashed my name and said stuff, they was all lies. So it didn't yeah, matter. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want to give them blessings and you know prayers for success because ultimately he just because he an asshole don't mean his kids assholes or his wife an asshole i want them people to be able to continue to feed their families mm -hmm. so i don't wish no i don't wish none of them people no no bad luck or nothing like that bro because they're never in, they didn't stop nothing that we were doing because they were never a big part of it anyway but but again we did see potential in them and some of them that went on to do great things that's why we wanted to rock with you we knew that you had the potential to be great the charles yeah, sure. the math hopper the the hip hop uncensored we knew cuz but first of all let me let me take that back hip hop uncensored was already doing a thing without us they didn't yeah, need us but we wanted to do right. the audio part and um it just didn't work because again a lot of people don't know business of podcasting you're so used to youtube you upload a video either it gets monetized or it don't you get paid every month podcasting family is a whole different game podcasting it's a lot of there is no ads that run through like youtube some people podcast you don't hear one ad and we had to go through a few companies to understand how to ads and then CPMs people I had I explained to them one night what a CPM is they don't even know what a CPM is so well, yeah and that was the one the biggest thing because everything is off a of CPM yes you get paid based on how your show performs yes it's a performance measurement put into it now that CPM could be anything from 15 15 10 to 15 dollars per thousand views or 75 80 to 100 dollars per you know per thousand views but if you so got 300 you know, views you ain't getting nothing you ain't getting no money and that's what i would try to <laughs> tell people so yeah yeah 
And the mistake I made early on is that I would want to please everybody. So I would still push a brand, man, go ahead and run a test read with it. But when that person got a hundred dollar check, man, what's this, man? You jerking me, man. What's, you know, where's the rest of the money? Dude, that is it. That was all your show was worth running the ad on. That's why I told your stupid ass to wait and let's build the numbers up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. now you've ran a campaign with a company. And the thing about these agencies is they keep note of everything, right? Mm -hmm. And so when that show runs across their desk two years later, that same show may be up to 100,000 an episode. Now maybe may be doing well, but they can remember, nah, I ran a read with them a while ago, man, and it came back shit. And I lost money. And I lost money. Yep. And, and they, they don't remember the little hundred dollars they had to pay for. They just remember it was a big waste of their time. Yes, yes, yes. So, so again, um, I, I, I don't say any of us be profess to be podcast professionals. Again, our company, when we was dealing with a lot of people, was in its infantile stages. So we were still learning on the job. We were still trying to learn. But everything that we got, we was trying to give to people. Mm -hmm. So for the people who did go on and you got this and you got this and you got that, salute to you. It's not, we was never in the business of holding nobody back. And it wasn't never a whole bunch of them, man, but it makes me proud of the fact to know that we were on a post early and yeah. these shows turned out to be great podcasts. You know, yeah. like, um, like again, like I think Matt Poffa, his thing wasn't personal against us. I think he just needed to go figure it out. He needed to go learn what he That's what he said. And, and, I, and I could show you the test. He said, yo, let me figure it out. And I was like, guy, I was like, yo, still give him, give him, give him his release. Show him, give him, let's give him. Remember, I was like, yo, let's put it in writing that you release and we'll release his RSS feed. Because what people don't know, it's so many ways that people can hold you hostage. You, look, you can do a, a hundred shows, a hundred shows that you don't have the audio on and I could delete your RSS feed. Your hundred shows is gone. So you yeah. was even being fair to say, I'm going to give you time to redirect. I'm going to give you time to redirect to your new host. And you didn't have to do that. Because remember that one company, they ain't do that shit to us. They, no, just, they, they didn't give us no time. No, they we didn't give us no somebody. We had 24 hours to go find somebody. And the thing was, I wasn't going to do math like that, bro, because he was really trying to just figure his shit out. Sometimes you need out. to yeah. go learn because he had the wrong idea about everything at first. Yeah. You know, yeah. he didn't understand. So through him going on his journey, man, he's doing his thing, man. You know, I salute him. The thing with Charleston White, Charleston White is just, he's a beast right now. He's a whole yeah. beast out here right now. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you, he made T.I. look like the biggest bitch in the world. <laughs> Facts. T Charleston don't want some wars. He don't want some wars on the Yeah, T.I., T.I., T.I. talk about, I'm the king of the South. I'm the king. You know, I've said, man, you don't let a, a dude that's five foot nothing, 120 pounds, so we never one eye get you so emotionally distressed. You don't want to devote the whole song to this man. <laughs> You oh, just he, gave him the best market in Charleston, probably. In, he got a song to Dallas. Him? Yeah, he wrote a song about dude. Damn. Put a disc record out on him. I said, man, Charleston is super popular. Live rent free in his head. Good for him, man. Got, got in his head. But I'm going to tell you, dog, I used to be a big fan of T.I.'s. When I saw him with his son, an incident about him talking about the short order cooks and stuff yeah. like that, that did something to me. Mm -hmm. You can't ship him to very people because I'm going to tell you, it's the short order cooks. People that work at McDonald's, people that work at Walmart at night, people that work in warehouse, people that may be a police officer. Those are the people that pay our bills, dog. Mm -hmm. Without the fans, we not shit. Fact. So how dare you sit up here and talk to your, because your hard-headed ass son don't know how to <laughs> talk to people. You you talking to a short order cook like that. That short order cook is a person that probably don't bought your punk ass records. Facts. Yeah, they, they probably mad at their life because they're a short order cook. I was like, nah. This nigga that ain't cool. Him. That's not cool, bro. Because once you think, once you get that spirit of vanity and think you're just above everybody, that's when it's about to be a wreck. Because see, I'm gonna tell you, pride come before the fall. Facts. So, um, uh, when 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 you um, when does the Gangster Chronicles come out? The Gangster Chronicles drops every Thursday, maybe a Friday, sometimes depending on what we got going on. Uh, Comes out every Thursday. Audio is available everywhere. I'm about to start putting a whole bunch of the videos back online. Mm -hmm. um, doing stuff like that. You know, by us creating our own streaming platform, you know, this linear TV channel that we got, mm -hmm. I'm starting to gradually phase out and just putting clips and stuff online. They're going to have to go watch it somewhere else because, you know, 2023 is going to be a pivotal year for us, man. I think it's going to be the first year we break that, like, million-dollar mark. Mm -hmm. That You mm -hmm. know, that million-dollar mark. Um so it's a lot of stuff that we're going to start doing different as far as just keeping most of that income in-house. 
but utilizing the YouTube and stuff. You, you know, why turn down that YouTube money, but it's going to be more of a clip-based thing and a scene-based thing. The whole format of that show is actually changing into more of a true crime show anyway, like it was originally intended to be. Yes, it was. And um, the, the, the app is coming um, really soon. So I think we'll tell them about the app once it's about the yeah, launch. Yeah, yeah, once, 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 but it's once the app coming. Going, that's going to be a one-stop shop for everything. Um, and you'll be able to download the app and you're going to see some stuff on the app. Uh, I think we need a girl show too, man. We need, a, we need some nice. Well, you news. know what? As soon as we break this news, bro, cause there's some stuff getting finalized. It actually is finalized. I'm mm -hmm. just getting the legal together, tightened up on a few little things. Um, mm -hmm. man, that's a trip, man. I, we got our own in-house attorney now, dog. Okay. That's how much we've grown as a company. We actually have a legal department. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's so, a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that and that's another reason why I don't address stuff, dog. I'm an executive. I just sue people. When I'm no, and no. I, I mean, you because I remember one day you was like, "Yo, man, I'm about to just send out a whole bunch of cease and desist because it is a YouTube channel that uses a lot of the audio and spin the narrative like hell." You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna give them no like, but oh my, please don't. Anything you say, you see that said this person said this, and it's anything affiliated with us. That shit is not what they were saying. Especially, so and, and the dog, that's the thing that pisses me off about that. If you take a piece of audio and you put courtesy of digital soapbox media and don't put no salacious ass title to draw it in, like, and put a picture of James or somebody up there and Big you on the side, Big you goes in on James. Yeah. You is. don't know you can cause a war like that to crack off. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. That That's what I was saying. It, it, because that type of show would say, this is my podcast. And it's like, yo, fam, you're not a podcast. You're a clickbait no, you, title YouTube. And salute to you. A content stealer. A content yeah. thief. Yeah. Because I don't, you know, I don't play that. You take any of my shows. You take anything. That's your ass, Mr. Postman. I do not play none of that. Because it's very difficult to create content, man. Yeah, you done drove to Vegas. You done been all around. I done came out to LA to get content. You know what I'm saying? It, it's mm -hmm. getting on planes and doing stuff. And I don't see a lot of people doing that to, to get content. But, you know, in closing, YouTube is is my home. Uh, I'm not going to give up on YouTube. I'm going to still do YouTube. But it's bigger, way bigger fish to fry. And we're moving more into what's to come. And as y'all know me, I've always been ahead of the curve. It's more stuff to come. And as you see people popping up on YouTube and they might have a chat with certain amount of people and all that, when certain things get phased out, because YouTube gonna do a scrub. I just want y'all to just remember I told you this. A lot they're of the this, process of doing it now. Yeah, they end up when you see when you see a lot of shit that you be like, yo, how are they allowing them to talk like this? They're going to scrub it. Just I'm just telling y'all right now. So when certain people get their channel snatch or is gone, I'm telling y'all that is coming because it's becoming an influx of a lot of knucklehead shit, and they're just going to get rid of it as a whole. So because it's, it's too much, it's, it's too much to police, man. Because right now they're using algorithms and pretty much bots to control a lot of this stuff. And when you're using the algorithm, it can differentiate certain things. It's a computer program. Yeah. So yeah. it's just going to demonetize or take it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. So that's what's to come. But again, um. Gangster Chronicles is on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. Uh, it's on iHeartRadio. Um, did, did, is that on Apple Music? Because I'm on Apple Music. Y'all on Apple Music too? No, it's, it's on Apple Podcasts. It, it would be on Apple Podcasts. No, I meant Amazon. It's on Amazon Music? It's Amazon. Yep, it's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, so make sure you go to Amazon Music, whatever streaming platform you like for podcasts. And again, it's very, very essential that you listen to the audio. Listen to the audio. Stop looking at we put up a, a, a Gangster Chronicles. You see an episode and it only did 4,000 views. That is the video. The Gangster Chronicles audience is predominantly audio. Trust me. They was putting up the shows on um, YouTube for a while, but that ain't count towards the deals and the situations. You know, so um, again, man, I want to thank everybody still. Um, thank you. Give them your social media. You, you be on your social media a little bit now. You starting to. Well, Post. you know what, man? I ain't got no choice. I've been home with a bum-ass knee. You know what I mean? So I've been a little bit active. I'm going to tell y'all now, follow me at Big Steel 562 but I don't do a whole bunch of wild stuff on there because, again, I got my family stuff on there. So go to, you know, 
Gangster Chronicles podcast. Follow me here. There's a digital soapbox network on Instagram. And I'm out here. Holla at me. And digital soapbox underscore EA too. Don't um, make sure you go there. Digital soapbox uh, underscore score EA. Is it digital soapbox media, right? Underscore EA. Yeah, digital soapbox media underscore EA. That's our assistant, Autumn. Anybody that want to do potential partnerships and stuff like that, holler at her. Where right now we on a moratorium. We're not signing no, we're not taking no more solicitations for podcasts. Uh, we kind of out that business right now as far as giving, trying to give upstart people. We won't say we're not giving opportunities. It depends on who it is. Yeah, and, and, a, yeah, because we don't have time to babysit shows and, and argue with you about the business. You know what I'm saying? Either you're going to mm-hmm. come in and be willing to learn and sit down and just know it's going to take some time to grow your show and you really have to um you really have to listen you know uh, again I'm I'm a, a teacher of a lot but the teacher was once a student so me being a student of the culture cuz there was a lot of things that I didn't know I used to be saying what you do be like yo now nah, that don't work like that this that and the third so I was like oh shit so when you get behind the scenes of the podcast business you definitely learn a lot of these dudes is cap a lot, yo. It's a lot of fronting going on. It's a it's, lot it's a, it's of fronting. A whole lot of front going on, man. But you know what, man? Salute to everybody. <laughs> yeah. We not gonna get ahead. There's no more light. Yeah. And, yeah. Man, hit me up. We out here. Yeah, yeah. So y'all already know why I'm at. I'm Doggy Diamonds on everything. Um, thanks to everybody who's here. I don't know what the hell is going on tonight, but the chat was light tonight, and I don't like that. I can't always put a title of this. Some some of this information be more important than some of that gossip shit y'all be wanting to hear. Cause this guy, this, this information is what can take you to another level. Gossip is just, but I don't even say it's gossip, just opinions about people. Although they might be right. Although they might resonate with you information. I always tell y'all that information is important. And one thing about our people that we lack, we lack information. Information, anything, any endeavor that we get in, we lack people that can come and inform you how to get to the next level. Now, anybody could talk about, yo, you know, Aaron Cook, Aaron Carter died. This, 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 anybody could talk about that. But how many people could give you the do's and don'ts of a culture that you want to be in? And the people who've made it, who are big, they never give you information. They just say we made it, and then you think following them is going to make you make it you got but they never give you the blueprint on what it's really about so um still let me sign you out i'm gonna call you later on all right bro peace yep all right so yeah that was my um partner uh big still of digital soapbox media we used to be digital soapbox network but we bigger than a network now it's a media company um some things coming uh uh down the soon you know what i'm saying some things are going to be announced soon um, I still want a girl show that I want to executive produce, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be real with y'all. No offense, no offense to nobody, but I don't want a girl show that persists of, I need a certain age demographic because I would like to talk to young ladies and I'm, I'm really going on a youth movement. Um, a lot of people of a certain age bracket are stuck in their ways. I want to talk to the youth and see what the youth how they think, what they think, and why they think like that. I'm just really fascinated by that. And I feel like snatching up some youthful energy, you listen to them, and then you could give them guidance. And again, like I told y'all before, you don't talk at them. You talk to them. But first thing you do is listen. And instead of us always barking on the youth and blaming the youth, we got to hear why you think like, you know, why you think like that. What makes you think that? And I think if we did more of that, we could be successful in many things we do. So, you know, if there's any young ladies that have a show, because I try it, I try it with, with women and women just think that this is what it is. And I'm like, well, where do you get that from? That don't work like that. This is not what it works. So we was trying to just tonight give y'all some of the information on what podcasting really is. It's a lot of work and some of the work you're not going to be compensated for right away because i didn't make no money you understand what i'm saying i didn't make no money so again some in in this company it's people who got paid and i didn't and i'm the damn boss 
You know what I'm saying? And I don't complain because I just read, yo, still, let's just pay them. Let's just pay them. Yo, the money that coming, give it to them. You know what I'm saying? And and this is what with with the sacrifice of being a leader is sometimes. The sacrifice of being a leader is that you have to sacrifice some of the monies. I always gotta make sure the people that is a part of this eat first so they can be happy. Yo, it's times I ain't getting no bread. And there was one company we did some stuff with and they um they jerked us, man. <laughs> they jerked the hell out of us. And then we couldn't uh, 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 explain to the people how we got jerked. They didn't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? They was like, oh, no. You know, but an article ended up coming out, uh, you know, um, validating what we were saying. It was a big write-up. I did an interview for them. Um, and remember, in this business, I never really even got my just due. You know, you see people signing big deals. I never got some of that. And who's more deserving, but it's not about what you deserve. It's about what you get. And I don't complain about not signing with people because I signed myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm really signed to myself and I'm able to move freely, do and say what I want as I please. And that's just very, very important. So um, for young ladies out there that might have a show, um, holler at me. I want to get with you, um, put you down with us and really, really tinker with your show. I'm not talking about, um, a YouTube show and, and, and I've, I've had it where I was trying to do stuff with women, but y'all got to stop with your personal life interfering with your business. Because one thing about me it's times I didn't want to get up. My personal life was in shambles, but I still get up and go live. I got major shit going on. I still get up and do this because this is what I profess to be my profession and this is my profession. So it's time that I couldn't take the time off. I couldn't go away. I, y'all know I done dealt with death. I done dealt with a lot of, um, you know, disparaging events in my life and I still put on. So again, uh, you just got to be persistent, consistent, and it's going to go and make sure you check out my killer priest interview too. Cause, um, you know, again, uh, I, I, I know what to do to get a million views, to get 500,000 views. I know what to do to do that, but that's not really what it's about anymore. The views come secondary to uh, the information that you put out. The views come secondary to what you putting out to the people. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if it's about a million views, I can get squirrels, um, you know, fighting because people like stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? But again, if stupid shit came out my mouth, then that makes me stupid. You know, and I and I just really feel that I feel like that. So salute to everybody who doing what they do. Um, more power to you. But again, I just got certain thing that I can't. It's in me. You know what I'm saying? Certain thing is in you to be a way. And you don't know how to be no other way. There is no going this way because this is what's winning. No, I set the precedent for what it is. I don't have to follow nobody. I'm never going to follow anybody. I'm never going to be like, well, they're doing this. So let me do that too. You can't beat them. Join them. No. No. I will walk away from all this shit before I become a fucking buffoon. You know what I'm saying? Because nowadays, you don't know if people laughing with you, laughing at you. And you feel like, hey, I'm laughing all the way to the bank. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Money. We've been getting money. Some of us always had money from this culture. So this is not going to make me greater. I, it's, there's no newfound success. You know what I'm saying? I've been successful since I was 15. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to come before y'all and act like no fucking asshole or cry the blues of, I don't, I'm not ever doing that. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to be me. Doggy diamonds love me or hate me, but I had to bring my partner on here because again, a lot of misconceptions about who's who and who's really doing what. No, I put people on, you know what I'm saying? I really handle business. I'm really a major player behind the scenes in the podcast world. YouTube is beautiful. It's cool, but we do deals. We do deals with major companies. We do deals with major shit. And some of the people that you love don't even do that because their code of conduct, the way they carry themselves, is never good for business and good for companies. Like I have a I am a brand. You know what I'm saying? I am a brand and I have brands. So again, when I told you I'm gonna get off Clubhouse, still was one of the ones who called me and say, Yo, man, why are you on Clubhouse arguing? 
And I was like, uh, nah. He's like, yo, nah, that shit make the company look bad. Like, you are a CEO. Like, you can't be on Clubhouse arguing because then they clip that. And then when we go to get to 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 get t- different situations, you was one of the assholes arguing on Clubhouse. You that was you. You know what I'm saying? So when I say my partner and I gotta send you <laughs> paperwork to sign off for, and then people see your name, you was one of the assholes on Clubhouse arguing. You know what I'm saying? So even if you ever looked at the Gangster Chronicles, look at the video. Um, it says executive produced by um, you know um Greg Doggy Diamonds Lewis, which is you know my real name and. Yo, but again, um, Steele is right, man. If y'all knew, if y'all knew some of the people that I bent over backwards for and helped, the hate that they gave me and give me, the phone calls that I get from people, it's really, really fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Because I really, really um, tried to help a lot of people, even when I didn't have nothing. I was giving people some of my nothing, you know what I'm saying? But just trying to make sure they straight. And um, these people are very disingenuous and dishonest, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, shout out to Blizz. We'll probably be back tomorrow with something, but I had to bring my partner in business to let y'all know um, this business because, yo, he be working hard, still be. So a lot of times when you do do business with the company, you do, I always say, talk to Steel, talk to Steel, because I don't got the patience to deal with some of y'all. I don't, I don't got that. Like, he got, he's very, very uh, patient. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't that patient. I'm not that patient at all. I don't listen, man. This shit going to be like this. This is what I expect from you. You can't deliver. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I am still to be a little bit more patient with you. I don't have the patience for that. I don't have the patience to deal with people because it's hard and it's difficult to teach grown up shit because grown ups don't want to learn they think they know everything and sometimes you might be right sometimes you might be right but in this situation you're wrong so if you are right in your situation go be right on your own but better believe anything you heard about me in business it is a fucking lie i am more than fair i done took from myself to give the i'm telling you i done took from myself to give the people yo make sure you get this i've called people and said yo I got $3,500 for you. I could have stashed on people. I could have dipped on people. I could have did a lot of shit and they would have never known. But, you know, what is stealing from somebody? If I look at you like a brother, a sister, a partner, or whatever, stealing from you is like stealing from myself. I've never stole anybody, anything from anybody. I never messed up any business. Most of the businesses and the companies that I've been down with, most of the shit was in my name. I'm the one who negotiated a lot of shit. So do not fall victim or believe bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. And that's why I've been here for as long as I've been here. I've been a part of this company. Well, I haven't been a lot of part of a lot of companies, but I've always been successful in those realms of business. See, you know me as Doggy Diamonds, the dude on YouTube or with the podcast, but the the people who um, invest, the people who write checks, they know me as Gregory Lewis, the business dude, and who could sit there still like this. I don't put on no suit and tie, no pointy shoes and no shit, but they know I know this business and you ain't going to piss on my head and tell me it's rain. And there's just certain people that I stay away from because I know dealing with them is not good because they ain't do right by nobody else. So I don't expect you to do right by me. So a lot of times you say, well, why you ain't this? Why you ain't that? Yo, all things work in divine order. It ain't it ain't time for that. It's not the point for that. So I always tell y'all, just be patient. Just be patient. I'm yo, one one of the biggest assets that I have is my patience. Is my patience. I'm able to take care of my family. I'm able to buy my niece whatever she want. I'm able to buy my guard babies whatever she want. I'm, I got a nice roof over my head. I got a nice car. I live good. I got optimum health. My sanity is there. Everything else going to come when it's going to come. When it's my time, it's my time. I don't give a fuck what nobody else got. Salute to them. I'm not congratulating it. I'm not hating it. It's just not my time for certain things and that's not an excuse because in more ways than one yo i'm super successful you know why because i set goals and expectations for myself and that's why i tell y'all 
you cannot live through others' goals. You can't live through their goal. So, because even when I seen people saying, yo, they got this, I want to get that. That shit don't, that don't mean that's going to work for you. Because what if them getting that, they had to slide a credit card through their butt cheeks? Are you willing to do that? Like I told you, it's ads that I turn down because it don't fit me. It doesn't fit what I'm trying to convey to y'all. And I don't want to be a hypocrite and say, yo, what's up? This is Doggy Diamonds. When I'm sitting in the crib, I'm drinking such and such. Because y'all going to be like, no, you don't. But I could have did it for the money. I could have took the money because the money was good. Like he said, it's shit we had to turn down sometimes $40,000. Now, when that forty k come in, I get hit as talent. Doggy Dime is no filter. But then I get PC off of everybody's show. So how much? I'm going to get a big chunk of that pie. And we just like, yo, nah, we can't do that. As everybody else is going to sell you liquor. They're going to sell you blue chews. They're going to sell you weed strings and all that shit. I never did that because that's not who I am. Is that to my detriment? I guess. But all money is not good money because that's not who I am. But they, they, I've, I've been offered shit. I can show y'all the emails. I can show y'all shit. So I've never sat before y'all lied, capped, or none of that shit. I'm not going to do that because what's the point? I can just be quiet. That don't make me better. That don't make me worse. So when you see people having success or what you deem successful, always follow the money. Always look at the money source. Look at the money source. So, yeah, you say, yo, he just got this. Okay, from who? I just seen um, Terrence Crawford give his reasoning for him and Errol Spence not fighting. And Terrence, Terrence Crawford said, he told Errol Spence, yo, I got somebody that's willing to give us $50 million guarantee, 25 you for you, 25 um for me. And Errol Spence was like, nah, <laughs> I don't know where that money coming from, and I don't know them. We gonna get that money anyway, so you have to be careful. So, um, yeah, again, I'm on Spotify, I'm on um um Spotify, I'm on Apple Podcasts. I'm about to start um making sure that I do put out a show every week, a couple of shows a week, because I got a lot of catching up to do. But I do many things, and one of the things that I'm not doing that I should do is be more worried about myself, my brand, and what I'm doing. A lot of times. Um, I be EPing a lot of stuff. I executive produce a lot of stuff. Um, the OG Wisdom podcast is something that I'm going to um, really put a lot of time into because it's C. Gutter and my first cousin is hosting that show. So I got to navigate them through this. So, again, it's a lot of things that, I, um, that I'm a part of. You seen Killer Priest last night. He told the world, yo, you you put my you you put my whole shit together. So it is things that I do that's not I don't brag about because I do it from my heart and I generally want to see people win. I had we had people sign. The business didn't go right. I could have been an asshole. I told y'all that before. I could have been like, no, we not letting them out their paperwork. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times when people say they dealt with steel, they don't even know my role. I'm not even really an owner of the company. I heard all I heard people say all that shit. He's not really an owner of the company. It's really still okay. We know what the paperwork say. That's all that matters. As long as the paperwork say what it say, I done signed off on some of you bums. If it wasn't for me, y'all wouldn't have had shit. Y'all wouldn't even been able to get certain money because I suggested you to be there. I'm the one who signed off. But they attack still because he does the bit day to day business so when you attack my partner i want to strike because you making my business look bad like i'm some flunky who's just here no co-ceo this is this is a fact but again um i hope you could take this information on podcasting and 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 utilize it use it put your plan together get your artwork together get everything together find your aggregator that's going to distribute it to all formats um Apple Podcasts is the biggest format. Um, Spotify is big. Many of them you might get a few listens. And don't be um don't be afraid to promote yourself. It's not spamming when you promote yourself. See, sometimes people say you spamming, you spamming. How am I spamming by promoting my stuff? So on your timeline, you're allowed to promote your stuff as much as you want. You're only spamming when you put it on somebody else's timeline. You're only spamming when you DM them. That's why I say to y'all, don't DM me shit. 
Don't DM me nothing. I got my own content. I don't need to see Joe Schmo content. I don't care. I don't care what nobody else is doing. I have tunnel vision. I got a network to run. I got shows to make sure they doing good. Like I said, shout out to the Connected Experience. Look that up. Shout out to Big Court. Um, we got Lovely T. We're going to do some of her sales on her shit. Gangster Chronicles is ours. Doggy Diamonds, no filter. And um, I got some more stuff that, that's in store. Uh, and, and that's what it is. I just work on shit. But again, I got to start dedicating a little bit more time to myself because I got a lot of content to put out there. So again, y'all be blinded by what you see. Again, it's not real. A lot of shit you see <laughs> is not real. And I've always been a business. I've always been a businessman. I handle business. You know what I'm saying? I handle business. There's no emotion in business. That's why I'm not emotional. I mean, when we talk about topics and shit, of course I'm a flip out because it's passion. And, and again, one thing that I think y'all do with me, y'all confuse passion. Y'all confuse passion with anger. I'm not ever anger. I don't fucking be in the house fuming. My hand ain't falling out or none of that shit behind shit. I'm just passionate about topics. The same way you might see Skip Bayless. You might see Shannon Sharp. You might some, see some of these people that you love for their talking points on certain topics. That's where it comes from. And I don't tolerate disrespect. So when people come... um into my chat or my comments and disrespectful towards me. I'm like, what the fuck are you disrespecting me for? We just talking like, talk about the topic. Why are you talking about me? This is not about me. It's about the topic. So if you got something to say about the topic, that's fine. But why the hell are you attacking me? So again, you know, it, it, it uh, I like the bark. I like to bark on people because it's better than punching people in the face. I'm from that era. When you say something I don't like, I just hit you. So it's better that I just bark on people than to be assaulting people. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not I'm not angry. Everybody know me. No, I play too much, but I don't. Ha I shouldn't have to defend myself. I'm me. Love me or hate me, I'm me. There's millions of people who love me. It's the, and you know who love me the most? That's the most important. The children. The children love me. Love me. Love me. Love me. And if you were mean spirited. And you are a bad person, the children wouldn't like you. So when the children see when cause children read aura before walk in the room. The child when the children don't fuck with you, you did something. So when the children rock with you, you know you a good person. Cause the children don't be playing. They be like, no, you mean you can walk in the room, the kids start crying and shit. You know what I'm saying? So when the children love you, that's it. But um, I gotta go. Um, I hear my phone going off. One of my phones is somewhere. And I got a call still. He's on the West Coast because um we got some stuff to 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 work on and um I got some paperwork to sign. But again, um, yeah, big things in store as always. So always remember, you ain't gotta make no announcements. You just pop out. Stay low, keep firing, because it's the the loudest people in the room, mostly the weakest people in the room. And again, what I it, it bothers me sometimes. When I see the narcissism on YouTube, sometimes when I see people, I'm the one is I was the first one and not be like, yo, motherfuckers lying because where was I when all that was going on? And some of the people who be talking shit, you didn't the first time you saw them was with me. But you don't hear my name because it's a lot of rewriting the history. But my name going in them history books, my jersey definitely going in the Raptors. And with some people, when you off YouTube. You just gone. They don't even give a fuck. You didn't do nothing historical. So the fact that I made history, the fact that I've been here so long, I'm happy. So if some people who want to say it's a knock on me because I've been doing this or you 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 only could do stuff for $100. No, I do a $100 promo out of love. I done got $40,000 ad deals that I done turned away. I done got $6,000 ad deals that I done turned away that I went. So don't ever think that I'm thirsty for money. I do a hundred dollars promo. I do a hundred dollars promo for love because it is a lot of people who have content that they can't get their content on certain levels. So I use my platform as I've been doing since the very beginning to help other people. And all these people who I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. How many people did they help? 
So don't think I need your hundred dollars. I don't need it. And there's certain people I don't like their business, so I don't even take the money. Seriously, I'll be like, nah, I'm a, I'm a pass on that. So a hundred dollars doesn't mean that doesn't mean my worth. That's a love price. You know what I'm saying? Cause I could, like I said, I get calls for, yo, I give you this and I give you that. And I'll be like, nah, <laughs> I'm not doing no vape shit. I'm not doing no hemp. I'm not doing that. But it is people with good content, good songs, good stuff. And I love promoting people candles. I love promoting people food and stuff like that. Shit. They get, they get a lot from me. And it don't break their pockets. If you're an up and coming individual and you're a person who's trying to get your shit out there, you don't have the advertising budget. Shit, you could go to a big platform for a buck. So some of the comments I see people, oh, you doing this for a hundred dollars. Somebody said, oh, you don't even make a hundred K a year. Stop it. Stop it. We don't talk money. Because when we start talking money, that's a whole different conversation. That's why I don't show y'all money. I don't, I never brag about what I have. I might brag about my cologne and shit like that because I'm, shit, you know, that's cool to me. That's man shit. But I don't have to brag. I don't have to show y'all money. I don't have to do none of that. I'm a grown ass man. Oh, let me call Black Dot as well, too. Because me and Black Dot going to put a special play together. So let me do that. I hope he's still up. Shout out to the Urban X podcast. Um, Black Dot and Malcolm, me and Black Dot, you will see us on camera together very soon. Man, nobody, what you mean? Rest in peace, Aaron Carter. Ease, get out of here with that shit. I don't care about that. He, get out of here with that. I'm not saying rest in peace to no damn Aaron Carter. I'm not even an Aaron Carter fan. You know, rest in peace to his life, but the fuck does he do? You know what I'm saying? Like, Y'all got to stop being so reactionary or everything. What the fuck you saying rest in peace to him for, though? What does he do? How did he impact your life? And the old lady down the block done got beat to death by some punks. Nobody say rest in peace. Y'all got to stop it, man. <sighs> anyway, I'm out. Until next time. I ain't with all that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't with all that. I love my people, and just because somebody passed away, I ain't doing all that. Later, y'all.